We're in the Jackie Robinson Museum in Lower Manhattan. We've only been here for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and I can't tell you how many tears of um, pride and joy, and also there's some shame because of what people that look like me had to go through, and we are still going through it. So those of you who don't believe in equity, who don't believe in fairness, who don't appreciate people for their differences, please visit the Jackie Robinson Museum. This man is more, this family, the Robinson family, they're more than just sports icons. What a wonderful place. Peace, spread love. And as Jackie Robinson says, life is not a spectator sport. Get involved, be the difference. This is the World Series ring of Jackie Robinson. And today we're gonna to explore this incredible museum. I'm gonna save very little and hopefully share a lot. And if you get a chance to get to New York, please visit this museum or visit online. This show is dedicated to Jackie Robinson, his family and his life's work. He won the Congressional Gold Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And every award that was given out by Major League Baseball during his era. I hope this tribute to my beloved Jack ignites the humanitarian spirit in all of us, not only when we convene around sport, but in all of our interactions. May it spark dialogue that leads to better understanding ourselves, our shared experiences, and the plight of others. Rachel Robinson. was very, very rough. I was right there with them every step of the way, through the rest of the season with the Royals, on to the Dodgers, to our life beyond. We gave each other courage. I was and always will be his biggest supporter. The Partnership, Ricky and Robinson. Jackie Robinson and Branch Ricky formed a historic partnership when they undertook baseball's great experiment that desegregated the national pastime in 1947. In recruiting Robinson, was Ricky motivated by morals, by money, by the desire to win? It could have been any or a combination of these. Change was in the air. State legislators had passed Governor Thomas E. Dewey's anti-discrimination law, making New York the first state to outlaw employment discrimination. Black journalists like Sam Lacey of the Baltimore Afro-American and Joe Bostick of the New York Amsterdam News were advocating for baseball to integrate. Black soldiers home from World War II were demanding equal treatment. While other baseball officials resisted the call to integrate the game, Ricky acted. Ricky's choice of Robinson, influenced by Pittsburgh Courier writer Wendell Smith, was a bold one.
Robinson was better known for his talent in basketball and football than in baseball, and he had a reputation for speaking out. But Ricky believed in Robinson. The men bonded over both being men of faith and having experienced the trials of integration within sports in college. A much-cited moment in their relationship occurred when Ricky asked Robinson to embrace nonviolence, to show that he had the guts not to fight back when provoked by racial taunts and threats. In agreeing to take on the experiment, the men forged an alliance that would change the game and the nation. Brooklyn, 1946. Jackie's 27 years old, and Jackie signs with the Dodgers. February 10th, after a five-year engagement, Jackie and Rachel are married by Reverend Carl Downs in Los Angeles. Three weeks later, the newlyweds travel to Daytona Beach, Florida, for spring training with the Dodgers minor league affiliate, the Montreal Royals. On November 8th... It was us against the world. They did a lot of things to us, but they couldn't separate us. We just got married and never really had a honeymoon. So we were excited to fly to Daytona Beach together. That's where Jack would have the opportunity to try out for the Montreal Royals, the Brooklyn Dodgers' top minor league team. Branch Rickey, the Dodgers president, invited me to join Jack there. I was the only wife allowed at camp. Before we flew to Daytona, Jack's mom met us at the Los Angeles airport with a shoebox full of fried chicken. She said, take this with you. You may need it. We were so embarrassed. Friends Ricky and Jackie's mother, Mallory Robinson, knew what Jackie and Rachel were about to face. The harsh reality of Jim Crow proved to be an especially shocking experience for Rachel. Unlike Jackie, she had never been to the South. A constant struggle against degradation. That is how I remember our trip. During what we thought was a stopover in New Orleans, we were bumped from the plane and were unable to reboard. While Jack was arguing at the counter, I looked around and saw two doors. One said white women and the other Negro women. I walked into the white lady's bathroom just so that I could recover my own sense of self. Nobody stopped me, but they looked at me like I was crazy. With no other flights available, we stayed the night in a terrible, rundown hotel. Jack remembered it from his time on tour with the Negro League. There were newspapers on the bed, which was crinkly and lopsided. It didn't do anything positive for our spirits. After being delayed for 12 hours, we were put on another plane, only to be removed again in Pensacola. A white couple took our place. We were furious, but you feel like you can't make trouble. We didn't have time to be arrested or anything. So we complied, got off, and decided to take a bus the rest of the way. Meanwhile, the prince ran a different story. Robinson grounded by bad weather, according to their reports. When we got on the bus in Jacksonville, the bus driver stopped and told us to move to the back. It was so flagrant. We knew that we were up against something very troubling. It was that a white mob was going to show up at the house where Jackie and fellow black teammate John White were staying. If they didn't leave town immediately. I said, look, we didn't want to tell you guys because we didn't want to upset you. But they didn't understand the Negro ball players on the same field with whites. Throughout these trials, Rachel would accompany Jackie everywhere. From her seat in the stands, she witnessed the name calling and abuse thrown in her husband. She felt especially protective of him, knowing that his agreement with Brunch Ricky prevented them from fighting back, even when provoked. Jackie and Rachel thought of themselves as a team of two. He would often use the word we to describe even things he had done on the field. In Daytona, rumors swirled that the first exhibition game between the Dodgers and the Royals would be canceled to prevent an integrated team from taking the field. Jack doubted he would even be allowed to play. But the game went on, and more than 1,000 black fans alone turned out to root for Jack. 
Anxiety and uncertainty permeated the atmosphere and Jack's spirit at almost every game. He had great difficulty concentrating and was trying too hard. He was overswinging. He couldn't sleep. The pressure was unbearable, but he Jackie was flattered and captivated by most of the letters and insulted by some. He and his wife used every minute of spare time to read and answer the fan mail. Then they had to use that time which couldn't be spared. Meanwhile, the Montauk Street Office switchboard was clogged with telephone calls for personal appearances, commercial offers, and pleas for his address or telephone number. People traveled hundreds of miles to watch Robinson play, and fan mail poured in from all over the country. Most writers wished Robinson well and encouraged him to remain courageous in the face of bigotry. Others described how they'd been inspired by him to push for integration in schools, factories, and offices. Jackie's brother, Mac. Mac. Jackie's older brother finished second in the 1936 Berlin Olympics to Jesse Owens and received, or should I say won, the gold medal. What a family. Not just outstanding athletes, also incredible human beings. Mac, his brother Jackie. If you get to Southern California, visit Pasadena City Hall and see the statues. This is an incredibly interactive museum. Please, if you get a chance to visit, it's awesome. Nineteen oh nine, February twelfth, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, is founded. November twenty first, Mally McGriff marries Jerry Robinson in Grady County, Georgia. Mally's parents, Edna and Washington, were formerly enslaved but used loopholes in the Jim Crow system to purchase their own farm. Mally and Jerry worked alongside Jerry's family as tenant farmers and later as sharecroppers at a white-owned plantation. Mally and Jerry Robinson have five children. The youngest is Jack Roosevelt Robinson. 1915, April 10th, William Monroe Trotter, editor of the Boston Guardian newspaper, spearheads a boycott of D.W. Griffith's white supremacist film, Birth of a Nation in Boston. Nineteen nineteen, Jackie's born on January thirty first in Cairo, Georgia, to Mally and Jerry Robinson. 
He is named for President Theodore Roosevelt, who died two weeks prior. Also in 1919. Nothing to read there. 1922, Jackie is three years old. Rachel Issam is born in Los Angeles, California to Zelly Jones Issam and Charles Raymond Issam. Zelly is a self-employed caterer. Charles is a bookbinder for the LA Times and a former sergeant who served in France during World War I. Rachel grows up with her older half-brother Charles and younger brother Raymond. 1924, May 26, Jackie's five years old. Congress passes the Johnson-Reed Act, which drastically limits immigration to the United States. 1925, Jackie's six years old. August 25th, A. Philip Randolph organizes the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, BSCP, the first predominantly African-American labor, labor union. 1929, Jackie's 10 years old. October 24th through the 29th, the stock exchange collapses, plunging the United States and the industrial world into the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. 1936, when Jackie's 17 years old, August the 1st through the 16th, the United States Olympians, particularly African-American track and field athletes, dominate the Berlin Olympics and Nazi Germany, crushing German Chancellor Adolf Hitler's assertion that games would prove white supremacy. Jackie Owens wins four gold medals. Jackie's older brother, Mac, wins a silver medal in the 200-meter sprint. The 18 African-American athletes who compete win 14 medals, a quarter, a quarter of the 56 medals won by the entire U.S. team, Mac Robinson, Jackie's brother. 1937, Jackie is 18, and it's February 1st. Robinson enrolls in Pasadena Junior, Co Pasadena Junior College, where he plays baseball, football, and basketball, and competes against his brother Mac in the broad jump. Two years later, he enrolls at UCLA, continuing to play all four sports. At UCLA, he meets his future wife, nursing student Rachel Issam. Jackie leaves UCLA a semester before completing his degree. Brooklyn, 1946. Jackie's 27 years old, and Jackie signs with the Dodgers. February 10th, after a five-year engagement, Jackie and Rachel are married by Reverend Carl Downs in Los Angeles. Three weeks later, the newlyweds travel to Daytona Beach, Florida, for spring training with the Dodgers minor league affiliate, the Montreal Royals. On November 18th, Jackie and Rachel welcome their first son, Jackie Robinson Jr., daughter Sharon, and son David, complete their nuclear family. 1947, Jackie's 28 years old, and he's waving from the clubhouse. Four days after Robinson's Montreal contract is purchased by the Brooklyn Dodgers, he makes his official debut at first base against the Boston Braves. At the end of the season, he is named Rookie of the Year, the first player to receive the award. Today, the annual Rookie of the Year award is called the Jackie Robinson Award. 1949, Jackie is named National League Most Valuable Player. On November 18th, Robinson is named the National League Most Valuable Player MVP. He bats .342, steals 37 bases, is second in the league for both doubles and singles, and registers 124 runs batted in with 122 runs scored. Baseball fans also vote Robinson the starting second baseman in the 1949 All-Star Game, the first All-Star Game to include black players. 
the nation suffers another blow. When President John F. Kennedy is assassinated, the man who became 36th president less than three years ago. The nation suffers another blow when President John F. Kennedy is assassinated. The man who became 36th president less than three years ago. This museum is simply incredible. I think I've shared with many of you in the past how much I love presidential museums because they capture a time that president was in office. Jackie Robinson Museum does that times 12. It captures not just the African-American perspective, it's the human perspective. This wall here is people talking about Mr. Robinson and his legacy. Uh, there's so much of his memorabilia here. Home film, home footage. This is Jackie out playing baseball with the children in Brooklyn. Um, this museum takes you into his family, his lifestyle, his the way he wanted to live. I learned so much about this incredible human being while visiting the Jackie Robinson Museum. And he, his life, his work is inspiring me 
to be even, to work harder, to make this place a better world for me, my children, my grandchildren, and you, your children and your grandchildren. If you get a chance, please check out the Jackie Robinson Museum. Um, peace. Spread love. On April 15, 1947, Jackie Robinson made his Brooklyn debut against the Boston Braves, integrating baseball while widespread segregation persisted in schools, military units, and workplaces. The country was moving toward change, but not everyone was comfortable with disrupting the status quo. While Robinson's arrival transformed the Dodgers, 14 of baseball's 15 team owners had voted not to integrate. Some white teammates asked to be traded, and others threatened to refuse to play beside Robinson. The hostility toward him was bitter and vocal. In contrast, Robinson was an instant hero among African Americans and some white fans. Jackie's courage in the face of death threats and racist taunts earned him respect. His thrilling style of play and fiercely competitive nature eventually earned him the approval of his fellow players and many white fans, especially the Dodgers, as they began to win. The Dodgers reached the World Series six times in his 10 years with the team, and Robinson collected every award in baseball, including Rookie of the Year 1947, Most Valuable Player in 1949, Silver Bat in 1949, and induction, induction into the Hall of Fame in 1962.